So here we're at an Airedale Homer Gala Rugby where it all started for me. I've got brilliant memories of this place. As a ball boy, you dreamed of playing senior rugby for Gala and I certainly did and I was lucky enough to do that in 1996 was my first senior appearance. And I always wanted to know what it was like to get changed in here and be part of the senior side at Gala. So this was in the, the home changing room. I remember being on that side of the door, really nervous and excited about what was on this side. And I tell you what, it's not changed much now. And it's exactly the same. It brings back great memories, as I say. Um, it's nice to come back and have a look around. This was where I used to get changed. This was my peg here, number 10. My, my Gala position, as we'll call it. And it's quite funny because we, we're all, we talk about respect and we're trying to find ways of, of showing respect and how respect is shown in the game. And this wee thing hanging at the wall carries probably as much respect as anything you can, you can find. You have to earn the respect of your teammates and the players from the club of the past to, to earn, earn the respect to hang your jacket or hang your kit up there. When you come in at first, nobody grants you a peg. Everyone's got their own wee peg. It's yours. You take care of it. You get changed in the corner. You're nice and quiet until someone says, tell what? There you go, you've earned, you've earned the respect to your teammates, you can hang your, your stuff there and get changed. So, so for me that's a great sign of respect and that carried on all the way through my career um, as a professional and as an international player. But that's where it started, that was my peg here at, at Nenadon. We talk about the value of respect, it's not just about your teammates and and the game, it's about the spectators and the fans as well who have a massive role to play. Now, when I played at Gala, and it's the same now, there was two ways you could go to get your post-match meal, which was in the big bar at the far end of the club. You could either go out the door, the easy way, and back in, or you could do what you could say, running the gauntlet, which effectively is walking through the members' bar here and there, though. Now, out of respect for the fans, this was, this was what you had to do. If you'd won, it was great. The adulation, the pat on the back, it's fantastic. There's nothing like it. If you'd lost, as I say, hence the name running the gauntlet, it was a pretty difficult place to be. You'd come through here and, and the knowledge of the rugby fan down here and the understanding that they had of the game was, was so much so that they were actually right a lot of the time. And the old saying, truth hurts. So you'd walk through here and it'd either be a pat in the back or it would be a, a nasty word or two and a swear word. But through here, past the members, and you'd be into the big bar for your, for your meal. What do you like, Mossy? It'll have to be juice, Gus. Yes. <laughs> So Colin, Colin Playfair, my um, Gala under-18 coach, Gala Wonders under-18 coach a few years ago now and former Gala president, so uh, some good memories of the, the days in the Wanderers, isn't there? Yeah, it was some great times. I think the under-18 level is a great level for rugby. It's, uh, yeah. I mean, the kids are still got natural ability and, and they, everybody enjoys it at that, that level. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we spoke about respect downstairs and, and how difficult is it as an under-18 coach to, I suppose, instill respect when... Well, there's a few temptations at that age, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> You're right, it, it, it's quite hard because there's, there's so many other temptations going on, but you just got to work on it Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday, mm -hmm. and it's, it's not just respect for, for, for the coaches, it's for your teammates, and then for the game yeah. of rugby and the referees and everything combined. Yeah, bang on. And, and teammates are a, a big part of that, aren't they? That's right, yeah. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a team sport, and mm -hmm. you've got to work together and respect each other's abilities. And it can be done in a number of ways. I remember some who trained over the back, that back pitch, Dark nights, cold nights, but a lot of the respect was learnt through humour. You know, if you did something wrong, it'd be a teammate or the coach. And I remember yeah. you having a, a crack at it time, time and time again. But, but that's important as well, the enjoyment factor, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I think at that age as well, you've got to be not too strict on them, mm -hmm. but give them some disciplines and also the respect as, as we're talking about. And it's, it's not just on the rugby field, it's in life in general. Absolutely. No, that's, a, that's a massive point. And when you played, was it the same? Yeah, definitely. I mean, he always looked up to the, the older ones mm -hmm. and um, just have to gain the respect as you, as you go through the training sessions and, and, and the games on the Saturdays. You know? And if you stepped out of line? You get told. <laughs> told? Put in your place. <laughs> Action or words? <laughs> Both. <laughs> Spoke about respect at Netherdale, the home of Gala Rugby, for my uh, career started, my senior career started. And we spoke about how territorial and possessive players were about their peg and earning the right and the respect from the fellow players to, to hang their jacket. And I said it would be the same, and it was the same, through my career, from amateur, through professional and on international rugby. Here we are in the Scotland dressing room, and not only do you have your own, your own booth, but there's a list of the greats that have ever played the game in your position. And when you put that jersey on to go out and play for Scotland, you're showing respect to the guys who've worn it before you.